Yeah, so this video is a solo game of Chain of Command, a game I actually like quite a lot. Don't get that many opportunities to play. And on top of that, I haven't played in ages, like almost a year. Essentially a refresher for the rules for myself. And though I know there are blogs and um, forums and so forth for the game, as far as inquiring about rules, I thought this might be a cool opportunity also for anyone that actually finds this little video to give us a hand with rules clarifications and the like suggestions as to house rules that people use that they find useful. I'm also open to, so anytime you've got something to say, uh, pop it in the comments section below and yeah, I'll be really grateful. This game will be a sequel of sorts to a previous game from a different system being Bolt Action and it will be a follow-up to the actions that happened um, on the outskirts of Pettyville in that game between the British Paras led by Lieutenant uh, Hartnell and the Panzer Grenadiers led by um, Lieutenant Bauman. So this is after, unfortunately, the Paras failed to hold the ground on the outskirts and sort of are pushed back where they regroup and make a stand against the uh, encroaching Germans, but this time in more favorable conditions, the terrain being um, more conducive to defense. So if you have watched the other video, you'll probably notice that this one uh, is a little bit different in style, maybe a little bit more traditional. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description box. So uh, yeah, you can check it out at your leisure. But for now, onto the game. So this will be an attacker defender mission uh, with the Germans being the attackers. Um, it'll be elite British paratroopers against regular German Panzer Grenadiers. On to the patrol phase. So in this scenario, the defenders can begin up to 18 inches from the table edge. And so this is where the paras will start. There's four patrol markers with the uh, middle one actually being one stacked on top of another. And the Germans have uh, placed their patrol markers right down there at the bottom of the screen, pretty much at the attacker's table edge. Once again, with the middle patrol marker actually being two stacked. Rolling for starting free moves in the patrol phase for the attacker, D6. And that'll be 5. So with the move of 5 free actions in the patrol phase, the attacker has actually locked down quite a bit on the map. So as we can see, that's locked. That's locked. Those two are locked. That one's locked. This one's free to move, and this one's also locked. So I have a question for you seasoned veterans of Chain of Command. Was placing the um, patrol markers, the para patrol markers that is, the defender, was placing the markers so far forward a rookie mistake? Because they just got locked down. I, truth be told, I completely forgot that... Uh, the attacker gets d6 uh, free moves. And the only free allied patrol marker is this one right next to this shed. So the first actual movement for the patrol phase will begin with the attacker, being the Germans. And they will move 12 inches to there. And that should be enough to lock this one down. Yep. Thus locking down the entire map with one fell swoop. And so as it stands, we have three jump off points apiece for both attacker and defender. With the first one for the attackers being behind this tractor and haystacks. And the other two behind this array of haystacks. While the defender has one here next to the bocage, one here next to the civilian car and lamppost, and the third one is right inside this building. So, rolling for support points, the attacker in this scenario gets 2d6. So, that'll be 6. 
The uh, difference in force rating is four points using the updated lists. The uh, British Airborne are worth plus nine, and the regular Panzer Grenadiers are worth plus five. Don't worry, I eventually worked out that's incorrect. So that's ten points for the Panzer Grenadiers. Yep, ten points for the Panzer Grenadiers and five points for the British Paris. Um, so now I will roll on force morale. So rolling for the German force morale. So that puts the German force morale at eight. Uh, now rolling for the British force morale, they get a plus two because they're elite. And that puts the British at a starting force morale of nine. Ah, uh, yeah, double checking the lists, um, the updated force ratings. Uh, I actually looked at the, not the Panzer Grenadiers, I was looking at the Fallschirmjäger. Uh, so the regular Panzer Grenadiers should actually get another two points. So that in fact sets the points at 12 support points for the Germans and six for the British. All right, so the support options have been selected for both sides. Starting with the attacker, time to roll some order dice. Ooh, we have a double phase. Not a bad roll for the Germans. And so the first action will be one of the Grenadier squads deploying from the jump off point behind those hay bales. So the second deployment will be the Stug with a pretty good sight down that path between the hay fields. It also means that if there's anything waiting for it to shoot back, it has no cover at all. So the third deployment will be the second of the three Grenadier squads. I'm gonna put them on overwatch. Um, I'm gonna say that the hay bales and tractor will all provide soft cover. And if you're up against it, you can see through it, be shot at and shoot through it. All right, so extra phase for the Germans. We have a house rule where um, you remove one die from your order pool with every extra phase to stop it from just getting out of hand. Does anyone else uh, use that rule or similar adjustments to the extra phase rules? I mean, I've had games where someone's had two or even three extra phases in a row and essentially that's just won them the game. So instead of five, I will roll four. So that's one chain of command pip for the Germans. So now the Germans are going to run across the field, exposing themselves dangerously for a moment, but we'll see. Um, the hay fields count as rough terrain, so you can't run at three dice, but you can run with two, let's say. And so that'll be eight inches. And so the German squad move forward eight inches running as fast as they can through the hayfield towards the cluster of buildings here. So now they're possibly open to some fire from British if they can uh, overcome what's in store for them. So the Germans did get a pre-game barrage, so let's see if <clears throat> the um, mortar team can come on, needing a 4+. plus. It doesn't. So it's now the British phase, they will roll six dice, one being red, which of course means it ignores fives and sixes. Referring to the errata, I discovered it only actually removes sixes. So that's one pip for the British. Uh, let's see if the sniper team fares any better. Yes. So the sniper did manage to deploy. So it'll deploy on the uh, first story floor and we'll try and hamper the grenadier's advancement. Possibly, if he's lucky, sniping the officer. So in case it's not clear, this building actually doesn't have any windows or doors facing the enemy. So that tank or the Stug, won't be able to do anything about it. Ah, question. 
can tanks and just high explosives in general um, just target buildings to blow up the units inside? Nor will the squad on Overwatch. So taking a shot, needing a three. Ta. All right, let's see if one of the squads for the British can deploy. Needing a four plus. No. So the phase passes over to the Germans. And they get another extra phase. Unbelievable. So the charging grenadier squad will continue to leg it up as close as they can to the buildings here. So they move 2d6 as most of them are still on the hayfield. And that's a 7. So yes, the German Grenadier Squad gets dangerously close. I mean, they got a second action. They'll probably shut down this jump-off point. The Germans have deployed their sniper to counter-snipe the British one up in this building. I have checked with the laser. You can see him. He's got a clear shot. He'll be able to clear these fellas without harming them. But he has to spot the sniper first. I'll put him on overwatch. Yeah, so after checking the errata, I discovered that the sniper put on overwatch actually gets a plus one to the role of spotting another sniper uh, once they've fired. See, that's why I love this game. There's so many cool little details like that. Um, I did, however, forget to apply this uh, bonus, though. Um, yeah, so that was, of the dice that I rolled, that was a one and a two. There's two um, sixes um, and a four. So I'm going to just leave that four. I don't need any senior leaders just yet. But we'll move on to the next phase, which is German again. With one less die. So rolling for the extra phase for the Germans. Okay, interesting. So that's another two pips for the chain of command dice for the Germans. Quick measurement, I was hoping that the uh, German senior leader, the Leutnant, could deploy behind these hay bales and order these chaps to keep charging, but he's just out of range. Now I'm not exactly super familiar with the game, I haven't played it all that much, but it's my understanding that on the phase that you deploy you can't move otherwise I would have deployed him here then hopped him and then ordered them to move but I don't think that can be done so that's the end of the German phase maybe the British can squeak past somehow without losing a jump off point British okay they can do something with that so we'll start with activating one of the British squads. They can be activated with threes, fours, or twos, threes, and fours. So I'll use a four, and they'll behave like a senior leader had um, activated them. But first they've got to get through the barrage. Yes. It's my understanding that an elite squad, or any elite unit, can deploy up to nine inches away from the jump off point. So where I've placed them here is within nine inches. Um, it's my understanding that, that they're supposed to be deployed behind cover. If not, then make sure you tell me. So I've tried to put as many of them as I dare in a position where they can still shoot the oncoming Germans. Um, also, without referring to the rule book, uh, I'm not sure, but is there a rule preventing you from deploying a unit uh, within four inches of an enemy unit? Even if that is the case, I should be fine. I've measured here, it's more than four inches. But um, all that aside, the paras are gonna give these guys running towards them all they got. All right, so looking up what I've actually got at hand here, we have two SMGs, which is four shots a piece at this range. So it's eight there, then six for the LMG, because it's a magazine LMG. Um, two for the two rifles, and then I'm going to use five rounds rapid 
from the officer who will add his command initiatives, which are three, as a senior leader, as he's been activated as such. So that's a lot of shots coming in. Okay, and I would say that these guys are in cover. So regulars needing four pluses, I believe, at this range. So once again, I'm not super clear on how I'm supposed to divide up the damage. Um, just like the British, the Germans split up their squads into two elements. So just to make things easy, I'm going to say that one element is out of cover and the other one's in hard cover behind the bocage. So obviously with uneven damage rolls, i.e. seven in this case, uh, the attacker gets to choose where that uh, spare goes, which will obviously be on the guys out in the open. So these guys killed on five, six, get shock. On a three or four. So yep, not quite as bad as I thought it would be. And now the second squad, which is behind cover, hard cover at that. Yeah, sorry about the dodgy camera work, but the result was no casualties or shock. First squad did take two casualties though, or first team of the squad. So I'll check to see if it's the leader. It is not. Um, so I'll assign the damage and the shock. So the next action will be another four. Um, see if one of the other of the sections come on. Needing a four plus, thanks to the barrage. So no, they do not come on. And finally we've got the third squad or section with the two LMGs needing a four to come on. And yep, that's a five. So the double LMG uh, section I've deployed behind this um, barn here. It also comes with a sniper. So assessing the situation, I thought I do actually have a chance to put him in one of those windows to start shooting at those fellas. But they obviously have a chance of shooting back because they have overwatch. But using the laser and just eyeballing it really, that Stug could shoot him. So instead, I'm just going to stick to harassing this bunch here. Or maybe even put him on overwatch to counter snipe their sniper. Yeah, I'll just put him on overwatch. As for the rest of the section, these blokes, I guess they can't move, they can't shoot at those guys because they've got their mates in the way. I'd say that they could potentially shoot through the windows at those guys, but I'm just going to say nah. So they'll just stay put. So I still have three order dice for the British left. Um, I don't actually have any more squads I can bring in. And nothing else actually can be brought in with those two, so it goes back to the German phase. Not true. I could have combined two of the dice to uh, make a four and brought in a senior leader, but my decision stands, I think, because I didn't really need to bring him in. So now we have the German activation. So the Grenadier squad's going to reposition a little bit. Um, at half fire, moving D6 inches to get into cover. Hey, 6 inches, not bad. Uh, 6 inches minus 2 for the shock, might I add. So the junior leader removed the point of shock and then repositioned them behind the bocage. So now most of them can fire from what I can see is just simply one rifleman right at the back will not. So once it's all been worked out we've got two 
LMGs, belt fed, so it's one, two, lots of eight. Two for the NCO with the SMG at this range, and then two rifles. But there is minus one for the shock, so I'll remove that. So we're needing fives. Uh, not the best, but there's a few hits there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. And so definitely got two groups, sorry, two teams in that section. So one is mostly out of cover. One, two. Well, let's have a look. So we got seven hits, two teams in this section. The rifle uh, team is mostly out of cover. So they'll bear the brunt with four hits whilst the uh, LMG uh, team is in hard cover. So we'll do them first. So that's team one. So that's actually nothing. And then team two, that being the rifle team. So that's two kills and two shock. Here's one of the casualties, the NCO. No. So it was at this point that I suddenly realized I'm supposed to halve the number of shots after moving D6 inches. Yeah, actually I'm just gonna re-roll it. Keep things legit. So I'll just reposition the camera here. So needing fives. One, two, three. So yeah, about what I expected. And then two on the team out in the open. A kill and a shock. And then one on the team in cover. A kill. Hmm. Okay, so I'll adjust all the stuff for that. So here I make a roll to see if the leader gets killed. He doesn't. Alright, so in the end I worked out that it was actually one rifleman from the rifle uh, team and one of the crew from the LMG team that died with one shock on the rifle team. I've combined the two and the one to um, make a three to be able to activate that uh, squad under the leadership of the squad leader. But I do also have two fours. Uh, I only have one senior leader. And I'm kind of scared to bring him out because he's just sniper fodder. Um, unless I bring him out to a position where he can't be seen by them, which I could do. So maybe I'll, I will do that because these guys are in dire need of uh, some support. Or well, they will be soon. My only concern though is I've still got one more German uh, squad left and then they'll have to act on a 4 plus to see whether they get on or not. Which could make things a bit hairy. But we'll see. So I have now deployed the senior leader um, in a position just behind the bocage. Now these, this rule set um, uh, sort of terrain and scenery and so forth like Bocage doesn't necessarily instantly block all line of sight beyond it unless I'm mistaken I believe it will let you still see up to four inches through but nothing beyond so he is um, in a safe enough spot where that won't be an issue I'll zoom out here so the snipers are the British snipers are here and as you can see, there's no windows there. So he's safe from them. He's close enough to support the squad here. 
and yeah, you should be safe from anything else that is on the board at least. So all he'll do is just basically deploy there and then remove one point of shock from that German Grenadier squad. Okay, so it's the British phase. What do the dice have in store for them? Interesting, very interesting. So we'll assign those pips. And so the British have caught up on chain of command pips to the Germans, having three apiece. So the paras are going to um, activate the already engaged uh, section there with the combined three and one to make it as a senior leader had controlled them. And the leader will remove one of the shock, well the only shock they have with one um, command initiative. The second command initiative, he'll order grenades to be thrown and then the third one will just be to open fire. So having checked the range, it's uh, seven inches. So I need an eight, I believe, for the grenade to land on target. Six, so not quite. Okay, so tallying up the shots, we've got six for the LMG, two apiece for the two SMGs and one for the rifle. So here we go, needing fours at this range. Oh, some terrible shooting. Actually, on second glance, it's not too bad, I guess. Oops. That. Because they're in hard cover, it's sixes to wound, fives to shot. That's right, I'm supposed to split it up with teams. Damn it. Well. As the, as the dice have fallen, I'll just separate it like that between the two teams. Oh, well, no one died. So it's just two shock. Okay, cool. There's also a two and a one left for activations. Could use a sniper. Then that will mean that the enemy sniper will be revealed. Or oh, sorry, will have a chance to reveal him. The British have two snipers versus the German one. Let's do it. Let's take a shot. So needing a three. Yeah, that's a three. Counts as the open. So he's shooting, obviously, the Grenadier squad here. Ah, that's a one. So it's nothing. So check for the German sniper who's on overwatch. I believe he needs a six. So no, doesn't reveal himself. And then I have a two left here. I think I will possibly pile this second squad into the building here. Yeah, so they're going to go in there. Um, unlike bolt action, I believe in this you need doors. If that's wrong, then... Oh well. So I'm not actually going to just do a D6 move. I'm going to do a 2D6 move just to ensure, or at least improve my chances of getting in there properly. Okay, 7 will do it. Alright, uh, so the British have one more possible activation with the 2 for a squad. But the pre-game barrage is still active, so got to check. 4 plus, and that's a 2. So no, they don't come in. And that concludes the British phase. Alright, so next uh, German phase. Okay, interesting. So that's another pip for the British. And so over here, I've got both the squads. <clears throat> one is the LMG squad, the other one's the regular one. So they're both going to activate using fours. So I'll start with the one that's uh, been damaged behind the barn. Obviously, it will open fire at them. Um, do I bother with the grenade? I don't think I will. I think I'll just use the five rounds rapid for um, 
three uh, command initiatives for an extra three shots. So here we have it again. Six shots from the LMG, four shots from the two SMGs, and one shot plus the three from the rifleman. So shooting. There he goes. British opening fire. Needing fours at this range. Not bad. So nice and even six shots actually hit. Um, so two teams in the squad. So team one. So that's one point of shock, putting them up to three points. And then team two will also take a point of shock. Okay, so the LMG section will open fire as well. So that's, uh, I believe, two men per window. But that's fine. I've, there's enough windows here for everyone that can shoot, to shoot. So I'll sort that out. So after having reassessing the situation, the British have decided to not use a four to activate this section. There's no point. There's no rifles for five rounds rapid. And using the concentrated fire with the Brens, I don't know. I'm just going to use a two, which will leave me with another die up my sleeve. But at any rate, we've got the uh, six and six for the two LMGs and then two lots of two for the SMGs. And they'll all open fire. Needing fours. So, yep, got a few hits there. So that's uh, <clears throat> eight hits, four apiece for each um, team. So do team one. So that is two shock for those two fives. And the second team. There is a kill. Is the casualty the leader? No. So it's to be expected, um, this adventurous squad that's pushed forward so early is now looking pretty tatty. A few casualties, or three to be precise. And a total of six, I'm not sure if that's coming up on the camera, six shock. Luckily I do have the senior leader nearby. The British still have two dice left to activate, so they do have one section left. I'll try and bring that on with a two. Needing four plus. Nope. And then I have a three. So I have no more sections left to bring on, but I could bring on the anti-tank gun, but the German tank seems pretty happy sitting where it is, so I think that'll end it for the British and moving on to the Germans. German phase. Ooh, Germans with the extra phases. They might be able to do something with this. First of all, we'll use one of the fours to remove three shock from this squad. Alright, and then the second and final activation will be using the two to activate this squad. Just keep returning fire, I guess, at this squad here. They will get uh, one less shot for three shock. Okay, so as it stands, we've got two LMGs, belt fed, so eight apiece, and one SMG from the NCO. So, opening fire. Um, I guess minus one, so. Rolling lots of dice, needing fire. Okay, we've got a few hits there. Okay, I think I haven't forgotten it because the opportunity hadn't come up, but this is one thing in this game that's interesting is that the more teams and squads you have in an area, the more the damage and shock is spread out and not as focused, which makes sense. So because this squad or section still has um, two teams, there'll be two shots a piece and then same with the fellas in the building so I'll do team one on the first section so that is 
behind cover now, majority of them. So, <clears throat> not sure if that's how it's actually worked out or whether I'm supposed to separately do the guys that are completely out of cover, but to be honest, I can't be asked, and I'm happy doing it this way. So that's just a point of shock on them. And the second section, uh, sorry, the second um, thingy, so that's nothing. And then over here, oh, so we got a shock and a kill. And then on the second group, another point of shock. I'll check to see if it's the leader. No, it's not. Okay, so that's been updated. So one casualty and just a couple of points of shock. Not too bad, but the Germans do have the next activation, the next phase. So let's roll for that, minus one die. So here we go, four dice. Okay, a single six kind of sucks. Two pips and one squad. So I'm sure you can guess what squad that's going to be. So this will be a nice and quick round. Yep, so almost up to a full chain of command die for the Germans. So German squad firing, same as before, minus one shot. So just spreading out their fire amongst all the teams there. Needing fives. Alright, so that's pretty poor shooting. One, two hits. And I guess I'll just put one on one of the teams here. The first, or let's say the second team. So nothing. And then one on the first team for that squad. Nothing. All right, back to the British. British phase. Oh, finally the British get to get an extra phase. Another pip for the British. So it's a simple matter, I think, of just activating both of the sections with a three. So remove a shock and then just keep hammering away at the Germans. So we'll start with this section here. So yep, six shots for the LMG, four for the two SMGs and one for the rifle. Needing fours. Yep, few hits. So that'll be um, three hits on team one. Oh, we have a casualty. And then four hits on team two. Point of shock. Is the casualty the leader? No, it's not. So just one point of shock and one dead man. So one of the LMG teams is just down to one man. So I believe that's minus three shots for that one. I'll try and remember. No promises though. Ooh, it's actually one extra shot there. But yeah, so two... Magazine LMGs, two SMGs, needing fours. Here we go. Okay, a few hits. Okay, so four hits on team one. So that's a point of shock. And then four hits on team two. Wow, two casualties and a point of shock. Is it the leader? No. So as to be expected, this squad now, completely unsupported, um, is pinned. And the British have the next phase, so they're probably going to get wiped out with a charge. So British phase again. Okay. So yes, having pinned the squad, it's an opportune moment for the British to finish them off in some bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, I think I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll def they'll definitely run forward just using 2d6 movement. So I'll roll that now. Ah, uh, <laughs> of course. So they only plod forward three inches. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's where they end up at any rate. Um, so I have more activations. 
these guys can't really... Now, there's a door there. They could try and charge as well. They're going to go the full 3D6. So that's an extra shock per team, which is ridiculous, but there you have it. So yes, they're going to bolt through that door and hopefully reach the Germans here to finish them. So I've already added an extra two pins, one uh, section... Um, Team. So let's see how they go. Yeah, okay, that should be enough. Yeah, all right, stop the press. I just realized another thing is that uh, if you're in a building, it counts as rough terrain. So you can't actually move 3D6, you can only move 2D6. Another thing I remembered is you don't actually have to be touching the enemy for close combat. I uh, have to be within four, and as we can see... Well, I can see. These guys are just short, half an inch. Okay, so that shock is actually applied after the charge, so they only have one shock on them. That's one less movement. So they move 2d6 minus one, average being six. So... Hmm... It's risky. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna cancel that. They're just gonna shoot. Okay, so then I just realized another bloody thing is that with the three, I can use one of the command initiatives to get rid of one of the shocks. So it'll actually be 2d6, and then I get the two at the end. So I just quickly looked up the movement rules, and it just says if you go all out, you get the shock, but does that affect the immediate running, that seems stupid, so I imagine it would be applied afterwards. So rather than taking a risk and rolling 2d6, I'm going to roll 3d6. Alright, that's definitely enough to get up to the Germans. Yes, I just realized that I ran through rough terrain with 3d6, I know, I suck. Alright, so after sitting down and working out the plethora of Pros, cons, bonus dice, minus dice. Turns out it's going to be actually pretty close. Obviously the British have the manpower advantage, but uh, the Germans still do get 12 dice for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It would have been double that if they weren't pinned, but that's the whole point of pinning someone before you charge in. And as it stands, the British have 15 dice. So we'll roll for the Germans first to get them out of the way. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, so that's 12. So that's 5 is kill, 6 is kill and shock. So that's 1, 2, 3. Uh, yeah, 3. I'm rolling for the leader. So three or less. No. All right, 15 dice for the British. Okay, well that definitely wipes them out. Like so. All right, so let's check for the uh, force morale adjustments, if any, on the bad things happen table. So first of all, it's a loss of a squad. There's two. So that's a minus one. And then loss of a junior leader. Four. That's a minus two. So that adjusts their force morale by three. Yep, so force morale for the Germans is down to five. So, as one of their support options, the British chose a six-pounder anti-tank gun, which they will now deploy here, six inches away from this jump-off point. So, from this position, they get a pretty good shot of the Stug. Now, the Stug is on Overwatch. Not sure how it's supposed to work, because once again, yeah, uh, but... The way we do it around here is Overwatch is simultaneous with whatever shot triggers it. Um, not sure if it's supposed to actually 
sort of interrupt that shot and go ahead first, but the way we're doing it is simultaneous. So I'll roll for the anti-tank team, I guess, first. So the AT gun will open fire. The shot is clear, so it's in the open. So it's a base 5 plus on 2D6, I believe. But um, the Stug does have a low profile, so I'll need a 6. Here it goes. Oh yeah, most definitely a hit. Alright, so it was most certainly a hit. The 6 pounder has an AP of 7. So let's roll for that. Oh, that's pretty good. <clears throat> now I think I need what? 5s and 6s? I'll just double check. <clears throat> so yeah, that was um, 6 hits. Uh, the front armor of the Stug is 7 as well. Let's see how he goes. That's one, two, three. So that's uh, going to be destroyed. The six pounder eliminates the Sturmgeschutz. So, yes, that was indeed an excellent shot. And enough hits, net hits as they're called, I guess, to actually destroy it completely. But it was on Overwatch. Not anymore. So I will fire its weapon system, see maybe if they take each other out. So after having a quick look, the Stug has an A, or not AP, an HE value of 5. So that'll eliminate the gun shield protection, I believe. Um, it also does have a mounted MMG. I think at this point in the war, being 1944, the Stugs had remote controlled um, MG42s so there wasn't actually a man with his head poking out operating it yeah now that I think about it I'm not sure that's right maybe I was thinking of the Hetzer I think so I'm just going to treat it as an internal kind of hull machine gun so that'll just be another 6D shots so we'll do the HE first so unlike the paras themselves, the gunner crew are regular. So this will just be short range, so four plus. One, two, three hits. Um, and I'd give them cover here. I position them so that there should be at least half of them covered. So how does it work if you've got Hard cover and a gun shield, but then you've got HE that removes it by one. Does it just become light cover or does it stay at hard cover? I'm just going to make it light cover, that's the way I remember we've usually done it. Okay, so that is one kill and one shock. I guess the gun crew do have. A leader so I should check for that no he's fine so in this rule set the gun actually has a crew of five so they're left with four at the moment um, I'll fire with the MG now so that'll be six shots needing four one two three hits this doesn't eliminate cover so it's hard cover Wow Um, that's still one shock and one kill. Check for the leader again. Nope. So that's actually down to the three that I originally popped out. Um, and two shock. So they survived. I'll roll now for bad things happen for the Germans for losing their tank. So bad things happening. Looking at the table here, it's got AFV, Armored Fighting Vehicle, which is a tank is. It's knocked out. A one is still, yep, one lost point. So German's morale is ebbing away down to four. If they go below three, this is unwinnable for them. And finally for the phase we have the final British 
Uh, squad trying to come in on a 4 plus. No. So it goes to the German round. Okay, so it is time for the Germans to get a phase. And that is what they get. So the first action will be, I think, this squad be removed from Overwatch. And then they're just going to charge to a better position. I mean, they might before the same fate as their mates, but... I mean, what else are they going to do? Just sit here? So that's what they're going to do. So they're going to... Oh wait, it's rough ground, so they can only move two. Damn it. So that's seven inches. So here we have the... Um, end movement of the German squad hopefully they won't get gunned down we'll see I think the next action will be for this guy the senior leader to run back behind cover what a derp I ran 3d6 on rough ground again so 3d6 movement so that'll be 7 that's enough to get him to where he's uh relatively safe so the German sniper is getting a little bit skittish as these paras are charging in so despite the fact that there's counter snipers up in this building he's going to try and stymie the paras advance by hopefully knocking out the NCO so needing a 3 to hit that's a hit and it's a shot in the open. Oh, nothing. So before I forget, there's that uh, counter sniper still on Overwatch in that building. He has a chance to spot the German sniper now on a 5 plus. So let's check that. Nope, still haven't pinged him. So the last of the German squads, um, now that there's no senior leader, no senior leader in reserve, I mean. They need to make a check to see if they can get on. So needing a 4+. Plus. And that's a 5, so they do make it on. So they're going to deploy ahead of the hay bales, but still behind the... Well, let's see. I was going to say behind this, safely. Oh, no, they're safe. But I have worked out that um, that fella can be seen by this MG operator so they'll get at least that one shot so that is 10 shots because it's 8 base but then I'll use the um, NCO's machine gewehr special rule so he adds his command initiatives to the number of shots so needing 5's so we got 3 hits So here's another question, if he's the only one being shot at that can be literally be seen, then I guess all the shots go on that one leader. He does have hard cover though. So yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, that's off camera, but um, it's all misses. So at the end of uh, that phase, the British player will use a chain of command die to end the turn, thus ending the barrage, as the Germans don't have enough pips to continue it to the next turn. It will consequently remove Overwatch, etc, etc. Okay, so that'll be um, a check for the phase for the British. So that's another pip for the British. So the first action for this phase, the British will activate the uh, mortar team. No check required because we've gotten rid of the pre-game barrage. And the mortar team will attempt to drop a round of smoke right there in front of that sniper. So having no line of sight, he needs a 5. No, so that's a miss. 
So I missed. Um, as per the rules, the smoke's got to land somewhere. So I roll a d6. So that's a 4. And hit if line of sight, which it doesn't have. So it's 6 inches short. So I'll place the smoke marker. So the smoke ends up landing right there. Not quite in front of the sniper. But still might be in a position. Eh, probably won't actually matter, but there it is. So the British will actually combine two of the two pip dice to combine it into a four to bring on a senior leader. And so the platoon sergeant will appear to give uh, support to that squad there and just use all three command initiatives to get rid of shock. So using the two that was rolled, this remnant of a section will rush off to find cover now that they have no uh, shock on them. So as I was saying before the batteries died, um, now that they have no shock, the remnants of this para section will run to cover. So they're going to move 3d6. Okay, that's not bad, 13. And so they run into this building. And yes, that's right, like a real numpty, I ran 3d6 into a building again. And this uh, anti-tank gun team will go on overwatch. So with the remaining die, this squad of paras will do a d6 movement to the edge of that bocage and hopefully fire at that German squad at half strength. Needing a six. There's a six. So with a burst of speed, they move forward and fire at the Germans here at half strength. Not all of them, mind you. Um, I would say just the front two here. The rest are probably too far back. So a grand total of four shots after it's been halved. Needing fours. So two hits. One on each team of that squad. So first team, that's nothing. Second team, that's nothing. Well done. Well bloody done. So it's the Germans uh, phase. Another pip there. So that's another pip completing a chain of command die for the Germans. Uh, that's a mistake, and according to the rules, if these Germans approach any closer here, i.e. if they're four inches or less from an enemy unit, um, that will begin close combat. And these guys are basically behind hard cover. It would just be a slaughter. So that was well done by the paras. So... Uh, these guys have to move somewhere. Yeah, so as usual in the chain of command, it's just not a good idea to leave cover at all. Um, so the paras have essentially just caught them with their pants down. So they're just going to have to go tactical and slowly crawl the hell out. By the way, that order was given by the senior yeah the senior leader um is it really worth it doesn't really you can't really do anything else so yeah you'll do that and then they'll move d6 inches so they move four inches so yeah hitting the dirt this german squad crawls slightly further from their initial position <clears throat> um Next activation will be this squad and they're just going to continue their advance up the field. So that will be 2d6. So be 6 inches. So after their movement is uh, finished, this is where they end up. Still out of sight of the Overwatch AT gun. Um, 
but uh, yeah, not much else they can do. As, well, the Germans still have a 1 and a 3, so they can activate their sniper. But that smoke actually may have paid off that fell short, because that'll cut the line of sight from the sniper to any quarry, and of course he can't shoot them, so the sniper will just go on overwatch, I think. Go back to the British. Section here will activate and do a move to get into a better position for more firepower to shoot at the squad directly ahead, so I'll do that now. So that'll move three inches. All right, so they have inched forward, basically moved and set up so that all but one of the riflemen can fire at the Germans there. And we've got one, two dice for one of the SMGs. It's at not quite short range. Four for the one that is, six for the LMG, one, two, three for the rifles, and then the remaining two um, command initiatives you will add that with five rounds rapid. So shooting at them. So needing fours. It's not too bad. Actually now that I look at it, it's kind of shit, but they are down being tactical. So that'll be three a piece for each of the two teams. So I'll do the team one. So that is one kill and one shock. So second team, that's uh, nothing. Um, I'll check for the, whoops, I'll check for the leader. It's not the leader. So team one from this squad loses one man and gets one shock. Next up, I will activate this uh, section and they're gonna shift to be able to shoot at this squad here. So moving D6, five inches, not bad. So now they've repositioned. This is what they should have, two LMGs and one long range SMG, but it's half because they moved. So needing fours on seven dice, one, two hits. So one apiece for each of the teams. So team one gets, uh, that's open I guess, so that's a point of shock. Team two, ooh that's a loss, is it the leader? No. Uh, and so the final activation, oh no there's actually got more, but anyway, next activation will be the senior leader, who's going to order the mortar team to fire at that squad. So needing a five. And that's a miss and one round gone. So the mortar team are down one round and off the top of my head I think they only have, what, three maybe? I'll look it up. So the final activation for this phase for the British will be the final uh, section deploying here. Now that there's no barrage, and I can get some shots in at those Germans over there. So yeah, they'll open fire. It will be um, hard cover though. So they will fire with six shots using the LMG, five shots with the rifleman, and then another two from the five rounds rapid. They are still in short range, just so needing uh, fours for regulars. Okay, this angle doesn't give away too much, but there you have it. And that's um, four hits a piece. So team one will be shot, and we have a casualty. And that's it because it's hard cover. And team two will also have a casualty. So two casualties. Is one of them the leader? No. 
German casualties mounting, but we have the squad here minus a couple of men. Okay, back to the Germans. Ugh. All right, so the senior leader for the Germans is going to keep roaring out um, commands. With these guys that are on the ground getting hammered by the paras over there. Um, yeah, I don't. I really don't know what they can do other than crawl towards the bacage here, and then maybe start shooting back. So it's going to remove the pin and get them to move these six inches tactically. Actually, I chose the Germans to stand up, exit tactical mode, and just leg it. And then I'll roll 2d6. Yeah, so that'll be enough for them to all scooch forward without getting within four. So, yep, I'll move that now. So that's where they end up. Tucked up right next to the bricage where they'll be able to either exchange fire with them, or I guess them as well. Uh, next activation will be this group here. So the NCO will remove the shock and keep pushing them forward. So now that I've removed the shock, the decision has to be do I move a D6 and shoot at half? Or D... 2D6. I think I'll just move D6. Should be enough, hopefully, to start repositioning them. Hey, there you go, 6. Okay, so we've got uh, the Germans repositioning there. We've got everyone that can shoot in a position where they will do so at them. But because they moved, it's only at half strength. So it'll be a short range shot. Nine of them needing fives. Ooh, one, two, three, four hits. So that'll be two apiece. So we'll start with the Bren team. Oh, a death. And then the rifle team. Nothing. So check the death, see if it's the leader. Oh, wow, it is. <laughs> what happens to the leader? Five. I think that's knocked out with a wound. So here we have the leader now, wounded, unable to lead his men. And that'll be a bad things happens check as well. The junior leader wounded with a one uh, is nothing. The Paris skate on that one. So all that's left is this uh, German sniper who can't see anything. But I'm going to do something that's kind of sneaky that I've never actually tried before, which is use one, well, my one and only chain of command die to redeploy him up to, I think it's 18 inches. So maybe if I put him behind the bocage there, he might be able to do a sneaky shot and take out the senior leader. So the sniper has repositioned himself there with a very clear shot to the senior leader. Needing a three. That's a hit. All right, um, five or a six, everything else doesn't matter. Nope, it's a miss, effectively. British phase. Yeah, the horrible, horrible red six. Two more pips for the British rebuilding their chain of command die. Pip, pip. So the senior leader for the British is going to use one of his um, command initiatives to get uh, the, yeah, the mortar team to fire. And then he's just going to charge in the direction of the sniper. Because if he comes to base to base contact, then that's the sniper gone. This might be a really stupid idea, but it's going to happen. So I'm going to get his movement done first. So here we go, 3d6 movement. Will that be enough? It might be. 10, 11, 12. Let's see. So it was just enough. Which means that the senior leader comes roaring down, screaming, firing his gun, I imagine, and the sniper just says, nah, 
I'm not paid to do this and pisses right off which would be a bad thing to happen, check that's a 5, there we go game over game over because that uh, loss took the German force morale below 3 which meant that they could not complete the mission successfully so the British get their revenge as mentioned before, I haven't played this in quite a while. Reflecting on the battle, I now suspect that the attacker should have brought some smoke. Well, here's actually another question. Can the uh, small German howitzer actually launch smoke? Because I know that the light mortar cannot for the Germans, so their smoke options are fairly limited. When I say small German howitzer, I mean the uh, IG-18. I know that the Panzernacker team can throw smoke by hand, but that's a little bit bodgy in my uh, opinion. I know that you can also get a FOO for uh, off-table mortar batteries, but from memory, I remember they were kind of overpowered. At any rate, uh, thanks for watching. I will be making more videos like this, but also more cinematic ones, hence the name of the channel after all. Be a darling and make sure you subscribe, like, rah rah rah, it'll help the channel immensely. Until next time.